What's up, guys? Welcome to the Steelers Game Day Post Game Show. I'm Mason Tepesky, your host. Today, we're going to recap the Steelers' 20-17 loss to the, Dallas, to the Dallas Cowboys this past Sunday night. Sorry, this show's a little late. It's Tuesday morning. Actually, going to be turning into Tuesday afternoon, afternoon here in about 10 minutes because it's like 11.50, 11.51. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Steelers, they hung in there most of the game. It was a very tight game. Reminded me a lot of the 2016 game, which I was at that game too. Albeit there was one thing that the off, one thing that separated the two, and that's the fact that the offenses were different. I mean, this game you saw a ton of, or in 2016 you saw a ton of offense. That's when Prescott and Elliott were first emerging as rookies, and they truly lit it up that game. So that actually, although we lost, that was a really fun game, one of the best games I've been to. This one had that potential. I thought we were going to event it on that last play, but unfortunately we did not, and the Dallas Cowboys pulled out a victory. I didn't think we played as bad as people thought. I mean, I thought we played a good game. This is exactly how I expected the game to end. I'm not like... Actually, believe it or not, I'm unlike most Steeler fans. I'm actually not that pissed about this loss because, look... I mean, I expected it to end this way. So, Dallas is a really good football team. I thought they would have the best record in the NFC. It kind of baffles me that they don't have the best record in the NFC. And I was reading more about the Cowboys yesterday, and Jerry Jones did say that they're kind of in a mini-rebuild, which I think is very true, considering the fact that the past two, three years, this team has made the playoffs, and... They've gone eliminated pretty early. I mean, the furthest they've gone was the NFC Divisional. It's just, it's certain opponents that gets them. Dallas is a really good football team. And this team, this is going to stun you, what I'm about to say. The Cowboys are not cursed in the playoffs. They just struggle against certain opponents. You heard me. Yes, you heard that right. The Cowboys are not cursed in the playoffs. They just struggle against certain opponents. Here's why that is true. Let's look at the past three years. 2023, who did they lose to in the playoffs? The Green Bay Packers, who they also lost to back in 2016 when they were that number one seed. 2022, they actually won a playoff game against Tampa, but they lost against San Francisco. And it was actually really competitive, that game. 2021, lost to San Francisco. 2020 they didn't even make it. 2019, I they made the playoffs. I'm just, or did they? no? They didn't make the playoffs. They were that was Jason Garrett. They were, that was his last year. They were not very good. 2018, lost to the Rams, who went on to the Super Bowl, but beat Seattle. 2017 missed, and then 2016 was the Packers lost. They are primarily only cursed when they play the Packers or Niners. If the Packers or Niners. Don't get in the playoffs one year. Dallas could go the distance if they get in. Now, granted, they'll probably find some way to choke because, yeah, they may not. I may not think they're cursed, but they're not very good in the playoffs. We all know this. However, those two teams have taken it to them in the playoffs, and that's why they're not good in them because you face more good teams. And that's not saying Dallas is not a good team. They just need some reinforcements. Like, look at their running back room. Ezekiel Elliott is past his prime, and Rico Dowdle is no suitable answer. Fortunately enough for the Cowboys, this is a great running back class. If I were them, I would probably draft, if I were in position to, and he's still there, draft Aston GNT, the kid out of Boise State in the first round. Or... Sorry, I just got a notification. Fires. There was a fire in an apartment. I got from WTA. There was a fire in an apartment building. So hopefully everything's okay. A woman was sent to the hospital. So prayers for her. But yeah. So prayers for her. Anyway, back to football now. So. Yeah, as long as they get... they So many good running backs. Ollie Gordon. Singleton. Katron Allen. Jaden Ott. Ought to go. The parody song. And Ginty, there's so many good running backs. They have a great class to pick from Dallas. 
make some reinforcements to that O-line, and your defense is really good. Mike Zimmer is a good defensive coordinator, and that's why I predicted Pittsburgh to lose this game, and that's why I think Pittsburgh did lose this game. In the battle of Arthur Smith versus Mike Zimmer, I knew Dallas had a man up because of the way Mike Zimmer ran his defense. He is a brilliant defensive coordinator. I knew that, and that's why I picked Dallas. I thought the secondary would be too much to handle CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson. It was, and Beanie Bishop, apparently, I, I, I was there and I saw it, but he didn't make his play on Tolbert. That's ridiculous. I've been saying all along, this secondary is way too weak. They have not done enough to address the secondary. And the last night proved me wrong. You cannot, you cannot, cannot, cannot think CD without think CD Lamb is not going to attack a weak secondary. He's the best. He's one of the best receivers in the NFL. He's going to attack your you. Why would they put Beanie Bishop on Ferguson and Lamb? Those are their top two targets. Prescott wants to go to those two. That's his heartbeat. He has to. Okay. Now, let's look at the wide receiver room, because that was a big deal. Pickett, first off, that was ridiculous, what George Pickens did at the end of the play. I get he was upset that, first off, the Dallas guys should have never started it. Nobody is talking about that. If you watch the play, you will see that the Dallas player was like, eh, and then Pickens just grabs his face mask. That should have never happened. That Dallas player is weak and a pathetic taunter. That's on Mike McCarthy because Mike McCarthy didn't discipline his team well enough in that situation. So that's ridiculous on Dallas's part. No, Pickens was in the wrong too. He's always been in the wrong. He is a nuisance to this team. He is a distraction and he is very selfish. He only cares about himself. However, in the grand scheme of things, the Dallas player started it. Nobody will tell you that. There is no reason for him to just go out there and just like be an idiot. And then Pickens make, escalates it, makes himself look like an idiot, doesn't even make the Dallas, makes the Dallas player look perfectly normal. I think it was Jordan Lewis who started it for Dallas, so let me look that up. But if you watch the play, you will see that it was ridiculous what the Dallas guy did. George Pickens. Jordan Lewis. And then he said, Pittsburgh needs a wide receiver one. Pickens ain't that. That is damning when somebody from an opposing defense says that. Damning. And Travis Kelsey, or wait a minute. Somebody said that's really good. I don't know if it was Travis Kelsey or not. The Pittsburgh need, oh, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, my bad. Back to the secondary thing, real quick. C.J. Stroud said that the Steelers needed a better secondary because he could attack them all day. When somebody like C.J. Stroud says you need a, sec a better secondary, that tells you something. They didn't express, they did not address the secondary well enough. And you know darn well, for all my ritual, or not my rituals, I'm sorry, for all my videos and stuff, I would have drafted Terry on Arnold over Troy Fatwanu. Let's look and see how Terry on Arnold's done. People are saying it's an F pack. Blah, blah, blah. I just think the kid's a lockdown corner. And he is a lockdown corner. That kid is special. He was special at Bama. iPad unavailable because I hit my thing wrong. We're not. All right, so we have to wait a minute now. But bottom line is the kid's good. Terry on Arnold. And Alabama football is good. We all know Alabama football is good. People are under people underestimate Alabama now because of Georgia and how good they are. I didn't underestimate Bama. I was the one calling ever since. Let's look back. Ever since New York, ever since Pitt landed Holstein in the transfer portal, I was saying this kid should start. I would have pounded the table tooth and nail for Eli Holstein, even when they said that Nate Yarnell was the guy. You know why? Because the kid went to Alabama. He's obviously really good if he got recruited to Alabama and went there. 
Holstein gets the job. Look what happens. Abracadabra. If we would have drafted, that shows you Alabama develops well and recruits, recruits well and develops well. They recruited Terry on Arnold well. They developed Terry on Arnold well. And now he's in the NFL. Now he's amazing. And what do we get? An injured offensive lineman. Now, granted, I'm not... Oh my God. Now it's five minutes. It's ridiculous how sometimes these devices work. But anyway, not we're not going to talk about that today. But now, um, yeah. I'm not mocking his injury at all, and I'm sad that he got hurt, actually. I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame because I, I like Troy Fatwanu. I wanted to see what he could do, and granted, I think Troy Fatwanu would be amazing on this offensive line. I think he's exactly what this offensive line needs right now, to be honest with you. However, he had his second round grade for me. He shouldn't have been drafted until the second round. We should have gotten Arnold and Fatwanu. Or Fraser and Arnold. If we would have gotten Fraser and Arnold, addressed the tackle position in free agency, we would have been so much better right now. Because Zach Fraser plays hard. Zach Fraser's doing very good. I'm very happy with him and he's playing amazing. So, yeah. For sure, good things for Fraser. He's one of the players that we could be good with. But in terms of the wide receiver room, because I think it's important we talk about that. Pickens is, like I said, he, he's selfish and he can be a baby sometimes. But can't we all? This team needs a wide receiver too. I've been t I said that Brandon Ayuk wasn't going to be that guy. And then we still not have acquired Ayuk. And we didn't acquire Ayuk, thank goodness, because look at how he's done this year. But this team needs a wide receiver too. They didn't take it that seriously in the draft. And speaking of the draft, where the heck has Roman Wilson been? What's his injury designation? I mean, we haven't heard much about it, but again, it's something that needs to be discussed because... He can be something special. I like his attitude, and I think he'd be great. But everybody is blaming this on Omar. And I can see why you're blaming it on Omar, and I think Omar made a mistake here, to be honest with you. The fact that we traded away Deontay Johnson to Carolina without a plan to get a legit wide receiver, too. So essentially, like what the people on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it's called, or socials. Just put it that the people on social media believe that it was a mistake by Omar to trade away Deontay and bank on getting Brandon Ayuk. Ultimately, we all know that did not work. This team is better off drafting a wide receiver and signing one big time in free agency next year. I don't know exactly who the receiver class is. I know Chris Godwin are and Chris Godwin is and Amari Cooper is. If we could get one of those two in free agency, that would be Utes. But it's tough because of how overpaid the defense is. And it's ridiculous that the highest paid defense cannot make a stop on fourth down to win us a game. And I'm not blaming the defense entirely on this. I am not. However, they were not good enough in the cuts. They're young. The secondary is young and they're inexperienced. So when Jerry Jones said, and this is how I'm going to close. When Jerry Jones said, the Cowboys are in need of a mini rebuild. Or going for a mini rebuild. What he did is very smart. They're still winning, but they're filling their holes to establish themselves as a contender. The Dallas Cowboys right now, looking at their roster, or the second best roster in the NFC East, possibly third best. Philadelphia, I think, has a better roster than Dallas. The Commanders, they're, they're playing well, but outside of the quarterback position, and 
the offense, I think Dallas has a better record than them. So I a roster than them. So Dallas, I think, has like the second best roster in this division. They just need to fill some holes, and then they'll be good to go. Rooney, our Ernie, our owner, back in like 2021, 2022, said that a rebuild is not in the cards. This team has a philosophy that is going to lead you down a straight path. Straight path. So picture yourself driving on I-70 or the turnpike. If you don't get off, if you don't make a turn, what are you going to do? Drive down a straight path. And that's what we're doing right now. We're on I-70. We're in Washington, PA. We're headed to Columbus. And we're well on our way to getting to Utah, where I think I-70 ends. He has us on a straight path right now, where we're going to be 9-8, and 10-7 and seven every year. Wait till we get... Wait till the last weekend of the year, win our last game of the year, cheer like heck to get help to make the playoffs. And if we don't get that help, it's all right. We'll just come back next year. But if we get that help, all righty, let's go to top NFC contender, top AFC contender, and get annihilated in our first game. And then we'll pick in the middle of the draft. We'll be 9-8. and eight. We'll be, yeah. Look at the best NFL teams. They all have rebuilt Detroit, Washington, Philadelphia, Kansas City. Well, Kansas City, not really. They just traded up and got lucky with Mahomes. Buffalo. Used it. They all do it for elite quarterbacks and they get them for the draft. So, moral of the story is as long as we continue this road... There's no reason to be optimistic about the Steelers. As I've said multiple times, I wasn't very optimistic about the Steelers coming into this year because I knew, like every other Steeler fan on this planet, what was going to happen. Looks like the iPad's back now. Yay, the password finally worked. So let's look at Terry on Arnold's stats real quick. Somebody gave him an F grade. I don't know why. He has 13 solo tackles. That's not terrible. But yeah, it looks like he's doing his job. So, yeah, I mean, mistakes happen, but time to move forward. Time to move past the Dallas Cowboys. On to our next opponent, who is very struggling right now. A complete and total mess on offense. That is the Las Vegas Raiders. Aiden O'Connell will most likely start for them. They got. They still have Zamir White, who is terrible. Devontae Adams ain't playing. This is a mess on offense, that's for sure. We, we got to do better. This is a great chance to do better. So I'm looking forward to Las Vegas. Hopefully get back on track because that, that tough November and the tough December, they are coming up like fast. And they will be here in a snap. Literally. Before we get to that tough stretch, because guess what? You can now include the commanders in that tough stretch because they're playing so well. So everything after the bye is really tough, except maybe Cleveland and maybe Cincinnati. That's the only easy part about it, literally. So until the bye, which is where it gets tough, we have three more games till we approach that tough stretch. Three more games. The Raiders... The Jets and the Giants. Gotta go three now. Maybe two and one. No reason we shouldn't go two and one at the least. Possibly three now. Raiders offense is atrocious. Jets just fired their head coach. And the Giants are the Giants. If you go three now, that puts you at six and two going into that. You still have a good chance of getting nine wins. If we go two and one, that puts you at five and three. You're probably going to get nine wins. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting, so just keep following. We'll have the Vegas pregame for you on Sunday. That's all I have for you guys today. Have a good one. Take care. Stay safe. And as always, peace. See you guys on Sunday for Steelers Raiders.